Hi guys, welcome to this, my review of the summer smash hit Jurassic World. I, as anybody who's seen my review of Jurassic Park will know, am a massive Jurassic Park fan. I love the first one to death. It was one of my first movies, the first movies I ever saw. came out the year I was born, actually. And uh, I have found things to like in The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3, even though they're not all that great. I still just enjoy seeing the dinosaurs on screen. Um, and it's something that's honestly been lacking. Like, I, don't, I can't think of another film series besides Jurassic Park that has done con that has done well or has done consistently good dinosaurs in a long time. You'll see them every now and again, but they're never the same quality as even that original Jurassic Park, which came out in the 90s when CGI was just being born in the film industry. With that being said, since I'm a big fan of all three of the original Jurassic Parks, I was ecstatic to find out that they were making a fourth one, and even more excited to learn that it wasn't going to be a reboot, it wasn't going to be a remake, it was going to be a legitimate sequel, and it was going to take place 20 years after the original Jurassic Park film. Now, Jurassic World, the, the premise is it takes place 20 years after the original park, so probably about 17 or 16 years after the third film, in case anybody was wondering. And it doesn't really say how, but the idea is that somehow the uh, engine, the company, got a hold of the island again, wrestled those dinosaurs down, put them back in their cages, and made a legitimate theme park out of Jurassic Park, but now they call it Jurassic World, you know, rebranding to make sure all the bad memories of the first failed park got washed away. Um, but with the park having been open for a long time, people are honestly used, they're used to seeing T-Rexes and Velociraptors, Brachiosaurs, and there's only so many dinosaurs that you can make. So, like they still try to dig up new dinosaurs every couple of years if they can find them, but the thing is they're running out of new dinosaurs to release. So, what do the people at Jurassic World decide to do? Make their own dinosaur that's a fuse of not only a couple different kinds of dinosaurs, but also like other just sort of animals. You know how they had the frog DNA mixed with the uh, with all the other dinosaur DNA in the original Jurassic Park, sort of like that, except for it's now like seven different things, uh, with the base genome being like a T Rex. So the idea is it's going to be big, it's going to be fast, it's going to be mean, it's going to be scary, and they call this thing the Indominus Rex. And it sounds silly, but they address that in the movie, and they sort of give a legit reason why it might be called the Indominus Rex, and it's funny and it works. But this thing doesn't behave like a normal dinosaur, and there are no dinosaur experts who know what it is supposed to act like. So through a couple of failures in handling, it gets out, and now it's running amok, letting loose other dinosaurs, trying while letting loose other dinosaurs and hunting people and other dinosaurs while the park people are trying to capture it. So. Uh, We've got a great recipe for a really awesome film, similar to the premise of the first one, except for now there's a whole park full of people. And I will say this right off the bat. This is the best Jurassic Park sequel since the original Jurassic Park. Uh, that's not saying a whole lot, because like, like I said, The Lost World and, and Jurassic Park 3 weren't very good to begin with. But I liked this film. I didn't love it like I love the original, but I'm starting to think that expecting any Jurassic Park sequel to be as good as the original is just asking too much. I still hold out hope that one day there might be one that hits that same level of magic, but I'm going to stop asking the sequels to do that, because none of them have, and maybe it's a little silly to ask any of them, to, see, to think that any of them will. So there's a few different ways you can look at this movie. If you are, if you love the original Jurassic Park, this starts out promising and goes downhill. Now, if you're just a fan of monster and adventure movies in general, this starts out sort of weak and goes up towards the end. Because what happens 
is it's really they're trying really hard to be smart like the original Jurassic Park. They are trying really hard to get those emotions. They're trying really hard to stick to the themes of the original Jurassic Park. And they do it really well for the first half of the movie. And then it doesn't necessarily go sour, but it goes crazy. It starts to have um, fights uh, with the dinosaurs and kill, kill shots, you know, where the dinosaurs are eating people or attacking people that seem really brutal or, like, over the top. And they feel out of place. And at a point, especially and if you guys have seen the movie, you know the last big set piece is just crazy. It's absolutely out of its mind if you're trying to look at it at, as a legitimate, scientific, scientifically sound think piece of a film. This is not that. It doesn't go so crazy that it made me hate it. It just went so crazy that it took it down a couple of notches for me. Now, let's talk about the casting. This film is starring uh, Chris Pratt as he's an ex Navy, an ex Navy guy who's in charge of training the Velociraptors, which is sort of a set a separate project on Jurassic World, and he's got this sort of half bond with the Velociraptors, and he can get in there without him without them eating him, and it sounds silly that he's trying to train them, but they make you believe it, and it's not so and it's not so silly that it's unbelievable, at least not for like 90% of the movie. Uh, so Chris Pratt is awesome, I love him. And Bryce Dallas Howard plays the park CEO, who's very uptight, and she has, and uh, it's all about the schedule, not a people person, and then she's thrown into the survival situation. Uh, and Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard as these characters are really the main reason I liked this film a lot. Because that honestly is the thing that The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3 lacked, was good characters that you really like to follow. I mean, you had, um, you had Jeff Goldblum and Sam Neill in 2 and 3, but they were kind of the only ones. and Everybody else was either forgettable or you were waiting for them to get eaten. But not so with Chris and Bryce Dallas. They uh, did a good job and gave me a few laughs, got me invested, and made me want to watch the movie and follow them through this adventure slash uh, horror of a theme park. Uh, there are a couple of kids like every Jurassic Park film has, uh, an older brother and a younger brother. And they're serviceable. They weren't bad, but nothing I particularly loved. So they didn't bring the movie down for me. They didn't bring it up. They were just sort of there. They did their job fine. Um, the villain, I mean, if you can call him villain, the dude who is trying to get Chris Pratt to weaponize the Velociraptors, which is executed about as silly as it sounds, he is a cartoon character. He is the one-note bad guy who's very obviously like you think about the road he's gonna, that character is going to go down. This this dude who's all about the military. He doesn't know anything about the dinosaurs and doesn't respect them and wants to make them weapons. Think about how his character might end up. Yeah, it's like that. Um, and he did bring it. He did bring the movie down, but he's not in it a whole lot. So, meh. Uh, now let's talk about the real stars of the film, the dinosaurs. I like the Indominus. I liked its in, I liked its design. I liked the way that since it's a mixture, it doesn't really act like any particular kind of dinosaur or animal. It doesn't have any idea how which set of instincts to follow, so it just starts going crazy. I thought that was awesome. I like the abilities they give it, uh, and that's sort of a mystery, and I won't spoil it here, of the film is what exactly is in this creature. Because the only thing I tell you right off the bat is that T-Rex mixed with other stuff. So I will let you guys try to figure out what exactly is all in this dinosaur. And that's a lot of fun to do. I love the Velociraptors. Honestly, the Velociraptors stuff with Chris Pratt is my favorite part of the film. The Velociraptors have always been my favorite part of any Jurassic Park film, even their small role in The Lost World. They're still awesome here and at least as good as they've been before. Um, now the next, the other two big dinosaurs are you have this Lyopleurodon thing. You know you saw it in the trailer, the massive whale monster dragon that comes out and eats the shark off the, off the chain. It, you see it a lot, and you see the tyrannosaurs, like, you know, the pterodactyls flying around attacking people. 
those dinosaurs were pretty cool, and they added a little bit of a shake-up to the, uh, to just the Velociraptors and the Indominus Rex. Now, a personal note for me, I was disappointed by the lack of variety of dinosaurs in this film. You have the Indominus, the Raptors, and the Lyopleurodon and the Tyrannosaurus a little bit. But honestly, in every Jurassic Park film we've seen, it's been the T-Rex and Velociraptors, and now it's I-Rex and Velociraptors, but still, and that's almost all we've got. I mean, as much as I don't like Jurassic Park 3, I like the design of the Spinosaurus. I was happy that we got a shake-up and didn't just have the T-Rex again. And, and so I was looking forward to, since this is the last time to have a Jurassic Park, because obviously the sequels can't do the same thing again, I was looking forward to the T-Rex fighting the Spinosaurus, fighting the Indominus Rex, fighting four different kinds of raptors, fighting like uh, the Stegosaurus coming in, like get some herbivores in there to fight, or something like that. And, I, I mean, a couple of things happen throughout the movie. Again, I'm not going to spoil exactly which dinosaurs you all see, but it wasn't nearly enough, and it focused almost all on the Irex and the raptors. And it was disappointing. But I'm not going to gauge the film by what I wanted to be. I'm gauging the film by what it is. And what it is is a smarter than average and more exciting than average monster movie. Like this is better than Godzilla or, or um, Godzilla or Pacific Rim in recent years. This is a better monster film and a smarter monster film than either of those. So while it doesn't hit Jurassic Park gold, this is Jurassic World good. I liked it and I think you will like it too. Especially if you're a fan of dinosaurs and monster movies in general. So my final rating for this is this is worth watching at least once. If you're like me and you can sit through Jurassic Park 3 and The Lost World and still get enjoyment out of this, you will absolutely like this film. Um, uh, and most people will anywhere from like to love this movie. And a lot of you guys might want to own this. So I say check it out. It's going to be, it's, you can rent it now at this point and so I say check it out. It will be an evening well spent. With that, guys, thank you so much for my first movie review of this new season I'm doing. Um, please uh, like this video if you like it. Leave a comment on what you'd like me to do next or if you have different thoughts on, on how you liked Jurassic World. With that, I will see you guys next time. Bye.